In today's episode of Automation Unleashed, I'm gonna show you how to keep your email list or your contact list clean, because High Level does have certain automations on the back end to keep your list clean. So if we click on settings in your account and we then go to the business profile and scroll down, you can see some of these standard settings that you can easily toggle on and off. And I highly recommend having these that I have on right now on as well. Let's review them real fast before we jump into this folder right here, list cleanup, unsubscribe opt-in, and review these automations that I also highly recommend having within your account published and active. So let's have a look at these general toggles. Again, I'm just under business profile under the settings and I scroll down to general. And then here we've got mark email as invalid due to hard bounce. So once there's a hard bounce and it's an invalid email, we definitely don't wanna email them again cause that will affect your email reputation. The big email senders like Gmail, Yahoo, all those big companies, they, if you send too many emails to bad emails, they'll diminish your email reputation and say, hey, this is not a good email sender. He's sending a lot of emails to bad um, email addresses. Let's put them into promotions. Let's put them into spam more often. So we definitely want to have that on. We also want to validate phone numbers when sending that first SMS to a new contact. We want to verify email addresses when we first send an email to a new contact. So it's not only about marking the ones that are hard bounce invalid, but to begin with even verifying if this is a a valid email before sending them that first email. And so all of these, like this does cost a little tiny bit of money. I think it's like 0.003 cents per verification, but it's extremely cheap. There's other big companies out there like Never Bounce and so on that you can use to do this, but it's extremely handy to just have this on, not have to worry about it and have it active in your account. So again, I highly recommend having that toggle on. And then we wanna make our SMS compliant by adding unsubscribe. This is more something for US based businesses. And we could customize this message in different ways by hitting customize and saving it. But if you customize it, you do still have to make sure that you're compliant and that that customization is compliant pretty much. Next, we also want to make SMS compliant by adding the sender information. Again, you can customize it and use um, custom values within this message as well. And then we also wanna make email compliant by adding an unsubscribe link to your email, which is again, customizable. So these are easy standard toggles that again, I would have on in your account at all times. But in addition to that, if we go back to automations, I created a specific folder for list cleanup, unsubscribe and re-opt in and resubscribing pretty much. And that's these automations. It looks like a lot of automations and a lot to go through, but this will just take a minute because a lot of them are very similar. They're just for different use cases and we'll just fly through them one by one. Um, I know this is a little bit more of a boring topic, but I do think again, to keep your data clean, to have a high email reputation, to have a high SMS deliverability, it is worth having these automations in your account. So let's check this out. Let's go into this first one, and this is called unsubscribed for from SMS by replying stop. So if a customer replies on the reply channel SMS, either stop or out, then this automation will trigger. And it'll add a system note and say that the customer replied, stopped or out. And let me just show you guys, cause we've got this, this action here. So within automations, again, this is the series of automation unleashed. So I wanna just reemphasize this. We can have one or multiple triggers at the top and then we can have one or multiple actions at the bottom. And so to find this system added note, we can just go over here, we can go back to contacts. And if you just click on a random contact like mine here, Johnny Test, you'll see that you've got all these toggles over here like activity, tasks, notes, appointments, documents, payments, and that's pretty much it, notes. So we can add notes here, anything that you want pretty much and save this note and then it'll show up. And we can have notes created within automations. And so that's basically what this action step right here is, is once they opt out via SMS, it'll add this note right here, kind of like I'm doing it manually right now, it'll automatically add this note. And it's just very good to keep track of that data so that when, yeah, you get complaints or whatever, you always have the data and you know what exactly this contact did in the past, the date, all that good stuff. So let's move on. That's the system added note. We add the tag unsubscribed from SMS. We enable DND for SMS. If you wanted to customize this and be like, hey, 
actually it's SMS and call. I don't want to call people that opt out anymore either. Then you can enable as many D&D channels as you want. For now, we'll just leave it for SMS. And then we'll send them an SMS back and say, hey, we're sorry to see you go. You'll no longer receive messages from our business. If you want to opt back in, just reply start and we'll opt back in. Uh, we'll opt you back into our SMS. And then we want to remove them from all workflows. And so the thing while I'm flying over this relatively fast is because all of these automations that I'll be showing you guys are very, very similar. So if we click on settings, we want to have allow re-entry on, meaning that if they unsubscribe, resubscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, allow re-entry allows them to re-enter this workflow multiple times. So that's all good. And we want to have stop on response off because that would stop it if they responded here or whatever, it would stop it halfway through. But the way there's no wait step in these automations. So this all happens within a second, pretty much. It is, it's all immediate, pretty much. So that's, again, the first one. Very good to have unsubscribe by replying stop. Then we've got unsubscribe to email and said email as DND. You could have a trigger link where it's just as soon as they click this trigger link at the bottom of your email, they are unsubscribed. So that could be an option. They don't even have to like verify or type in their email. They just click the trigger link. The trigger link is always associated with that contact and then they're unsubscribed. So that is a way to do it. But um, the easiest way to do it is just the event unsubscribed within the email events. And then again, we're adding the system note. We're tagging them as unsubscribed via email. We're enabling DD for email. And then if you want to, you can send an internal app notification. And so the SMS one didn't have this, but if you want to have it on SMS, it's very easy to rebuild. It's just an internal app notification. It could be a email notification, SMS notification, but this is an app notification that'll show up on your mobile app on your mobile phone. Uh, and for that, you just need to download the lead connector or high level mobile app. And um, so yeah, if you get a lot of unsubscribes, this step might be annoying and you might just wanna delete it. So let me just hit cancel here. You could just delete this action or change it. But I guess when you're sending larger email campaigns, that is data that again, the big email reputation companies like Gmail, uh, Yahoo look at that if you get too many unsubscribes in a certain time frame, they'll diminish your email reputation. They'll be like, hey, this person, they're sending spammy emails. Um, people aren't reading them, people are unsubscribing from them, then um, let's let's go ahead and put these emails that they're sending into the promotions tab, into the spam tab, into different areas where people aren't annoyed by them anymore. So that's that. Um, let's move on to number three. If an email is bounced, that is an event within the system as well. So the trigger up here is just event, bounced, mailgun only. And so High Level has an integration with with their email system lead connector email and lead connector email is just mailgun pretty much and so if you use lead connector email you can use this event and once an email bounces through mailgun that data can be transferred through high level through lead connector email pretty much and you can create automations with it because again that is the strongest integration but if you use a different email sender you might not be able to use this uh, event and I'll add a system note, add the tag, and set email DND &D again. So let's move on to number four, email complain, set DND, user marked as spam. So there's also an event, an email event called complained spam. And so that's pretty much the trigger right here. We'll just add the system note that the contact complained from email, and we'll put them on DND. And we're sending an internal app notification here as well. And I think that's fair to be like, hey, somebody complained about spam. Uh, again, depending on if you're sending 10,000 emails a month or 100 emails a month, that will affect if you want to send uh, notifications like that. Then we've got number five, contact spam. So this is more something like you actively, you just had a phone call, you received an email back from a contact and you're like, hey, this is a spam contact. I don't want to reach out to this contact anymore. Then you manually can add a tag and by adding a tag spam, it'll tag them as spam and trigger these automations. We could also change the a certain custom field on the contact and tag them that by, by doing that, tag them as spam or add the tag junk. And it'll add a system note, enable DND for all channels so that we don't reach out to them anymore because they're spam. 
at, we're adding the tag spam, we're adding the tag junk. Some people like you can do both. You can use one. Uh, I would probably focus on one mainly. I think spam or junk, whatever you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. And then we're just going to remove them all from all workflows. So that was number five. Let's move on to number six. We do also have a trigger that is specifically for Apple Mail. And pretty much if you people unsubscribe in Apple Mail and it, it'll contain the, the email that you receive back will contain the phrase Apple Mail sent this email to um, to spam or whatever. And so that's the phrase that you want to have in there. And once you receive a reply via email with this phrase, you basically want to add that system now, unsubscribe them. Uh, and set them D&D for email. So that's what this number six does, number seven. And so this is more fun now. This is <laughs> this has all been very negative, like, hey, spam, junk, bad email, put them on D&D, complaints. But this is more fun now. This is when somebody has unsubscribed and they actually resubscribe, they opt back in. And so the first we're looking at is uh, email. They resubscribe via email. So these are positive intent actions. If somebody has unsubscribed, but then they submit an order, we want to resubscribe them. They're a customer. They, they need to receive customer communication and be resubscribed. When a order form is submitted or a form is submitted, when product access is granted, when a membership uh, sign up happens, when a ticked up form is submitted, when an order form is submitted, when a Shopify order is fulfilled, when a customer replies in general. And so this is where you could be like, hey, is when a customer replies in general, is he opted in again or not? So you could delete this if you wanted to. But again, I if in my world, when somebody reply, like if they've opted out, but then they reply back to me and reach out to me, they're opted back in and they're going to, you know, they're not going to be put on D&D anymore. When an invoice is sent, we've got that trigger right here. We've got survey submitted, customer books and appointment, lead form is submitted, order is placed on Shopify and access is granted to an offer. So when any of those happens, this automation will basically trigger and it'll look, are they D and, on do not disturb on email? If, if they're not, we don't have to do anything because they're not on D, D and D. But if they are on do not disturb, let's add that system note that the contact opted in and resubscribed by email. Let's um, remove the tag of email unsubscribe. We could add a new tag of like re email resubscribed, but we're removing this one and let's enable, let's disable do not disturb and let's enable email again, pretty much. So that's nine seven for email and nine eight is pretty much the same for SMS and phone numbers. So let's just have a quick look at that. Um, pretty much the same triggers up here and then very, very similar workflow. If they're not unsubscribed, we don't have to do anything. If they are, let's resubscribe and let's enable SMS sending to this contact again. So I know that was a lot of info and it was very fast, but let me know if you have any questions about any of these automations. Again, we're in the series of Automation Unleashed, where I teach you how to unleash the power of high-level automations all from within your account and you just create smarter automations like that to make your life easier and have more time for your family, your friends and your freedom. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, either way, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.